Get a project car, she said. It'll be fun, she said. Got myself a 2005 BA Falcon, and here you can see the, uh, the throttle body. So I've been chasing a misfire for the last couple of days, and I, I thought, oh, no, I'll, I'll take a few components off. So uh, I started with the throttle position sensor, otherwise known as the TPS. So I'm backing out the screws, and um, they're fairly, fairly tight. There's no sign of any sort of corrosion uh, around the screw threads or anything like that. I use plenty of um, WD-40 or, you know, just to help loosen things up. Sure enough, I get uh, a few millimeters out and they go loose. Not once, but fucking twice. <laughs> So now I've got this dilemma where as you might see there's broken screws to remove and here are the rest of them. Looks like another repair job. So the repair of this unit's going to prove to be quite challenging only because we have the repair on this side with two M4 bolts which are relatively small. So generally the smaller the bolt or the smaller the, the, the broken stud or whatever the harder the repair because you have to be more precise in making sure you drill down into the center of the, um, the bolts or studs to affect removal with a stud remover. The problem with this is because this shape isn't simple shape, it's actually quite complex. We have to make uh, some uh, decisions on how we're gonna mount this in the milling machine. I've decided to go to the milling machine. I'm definitely not doing the vise and hand drill trick because these are too small to muck around with. And if you get it wrong, you probably ruin the whole throttle body. So if we just take a look at the problem area, and we take the throttle position sensor off, keeping in mind, noting its um, orientation. You can tell that you've got the two holes, mounting holes. You've obviously got the shaft, which is just a two flat sided shaft, uh, which comes off the butterfly shaft there. And you've got this locator, which is ca cast into the plastic itself or molded into the plastic, which locates in that hole. So there's only one, one real way you can get this back on. With that said, the throttle position sensor seems to only have a range of about, I want to say a little slightly more than 90 degrees because you can't turn this any more than that. So you can only really get this on one way. If you do reverse it and put it on the other way, you won't get enough rotation to relocate that dowel. So you have to put it on this way and then just maneuver it enough to drop it into that dowel locator. So with that said, that can come off, no problem. Here we have the two broken uh, screws. And as I said, they are M4. So we have to be more precise in when we try and drill out and remove these studs. The other problem that presents is that we've got no way of mounting this on the milling table. Because if you look on the other side, we've got all the electronic, well, the electrics for the um, fly-by-wire. This throttle body doesn't rely on cables like old school uh, throttle bodies do. It's fully electric. So we've got a two pin connector here, which drives this motor, which drives the butterfly. So the next challenge it presents is that we need to remove, and that will give us, should give us a flat surface to mount on the milling machine so we can then affect the stud removal from a, from a pure vertical source or vertical mounting. And we don't have to worry about our alignment. The only um, implication is that we locate centrally over those studs, which would be a lot easier if we've got one of our planes solid. In this case, we'll have two planes sorted because we're not too worried about measuring off any faces here because you can see that face is not perpendicular to the plane of these screws. So we can't square off that and expect to get distances off these screw holes. We have to, we have to be completely arbitrarily lined up just over these studs and eyeball it, just using small jog movements of, of the machine to locate over these studs and try and get a, a good center. With that said, I've already gone ahead and removed the screws for the fly-by-wire system. And these came out relatively, well, they came out perfectly easy compared to the uh, TPS side. These just dropped straight out. So that was good. Now the problem with this is it's actually, it, it looks daunting, but it's not actually that daunting. But there is a there is a way to reset and reassemble all this once we get to that stage. So we'll just pull off the mechanism here. Basically it reveals a nice flat surface that we can put against our table. I've already had this apart previously just to get an eyeball on what's going on. We can take our preload spring off. Now the problem with this is this preload spring needs to be reset when we reassemble everything. Luckily, it's actually quite easy to do. And all that does is puts a little bit of preload against the butterfly in its closed position. So it gives something um, for the motor to work against and it gives a more smoother uh, operation. 
So while it looks daunting, it's not actually that hard, but I will go through the reassembling process. So there's no loose parts in the backing plate for the uh, fly-by-wire. It's just a simple motor there, a nice rubber gasket, which looks intact. So we can set that aside for now. And then we, we can look at our uh, mounting surface. We don't really want to mar this surface because it is such a, um, a small rubber gasket that fits over there. All that is is just to stop dirt and, and grit getting um, ingress into this this cavity because if you had any dirt or grit that got stuck within these these gear teeth, you're going to have all sorts of issues with your throttle. Uh, not a favorable outcome. When we do reassemble, we have to make sure we blow out and remove any possible sorry about the noise we remove any possible grit or sand or swarf or anything that might end up in there because it, you will end up with a bad day if your throttle doesn't work i'll just zoom in a bit here and see what we can do see if we can look at things a bit closer so you might also notice it's extremely dry in here and when i say dry there's no lube or anything and you can hear the gears rattling get against each other now i think that's by design because it looks like we have some sort of plastic or nylon type um, gears which are generally self-lubricating. So the reason probably why they don't use any wet lubricants in here is to stop any gumming up because you do not want anything gumming up in relation to the throttle and getting stuck over time. So it purposely left dry and we're not going to apply any lubricants in here whatsoever even when we reinstall. All we have to do is make sure it's dead clean, there's no uh, debris in there, and we are good to reassemble. I think what's left to do is mount this to the, the table on the mill and see if we can set this up so these points are, most, uh, are vertical, and we can then run around and see if we can find a way to uh, properly remove or at least drill out the center of these bolts and see if we can extract them um, through a normal process. Worst case scenario, we will bore out the holes completely, oversize them and put a helicoil in. Um, but I haven't got any M4 helicoils. We'll get to that. So without further ado, let's get to the table and mount things up. Okay, the throttle body is now set up on the mill bed. It's just an arbitrary setup at the moment. There's no rhyme or reason to its positioning. It's just fastening down to the the face that we spoke about earlier where the fly-by-wire mechanism was fastened it's now given me a great vertical as opposed to the cutting bit so we can get we can be sure that we're going to drill straight down into these um, broken studs first port of call is to take the five mil end mill that i've got here five five mil four flute and just flatten off the tops of the broken studs at this point in time and then we can see if we can locate the center of those and drill a probably a two millimeter hole down through the middle hopefully i can get a screw extractor set in there and remove but uh, i'm not really liking my chances because of how tight these were in uh, in the holes when i was undoing them so at the moment what we'll do we'll center off this first one here it just so has it that the counter bore at, around the actual screw hole is back about five millimeters so for me to line this up by jogging the table around if i turn to my pc here i can locate and fairly easily um, hone in on that center lot on that center now if i bring down the cutting bit we want to get sort of eyeball it one or two mil and then we can sort of jog in the center line and we can actually do micro feed as well and that's me just mucking around with the positioning so what i'll do i'll set it up off camera because you don't want to see me mucking around and trying to get center on this and we'll come back and we'll start a cut So it seems fairly close, but there's a lot of mucking around to get it bang on. You only really get one shot at this. So I think, hmm, 
Left to right might seem okay. What I might do is manually drop the uh, quill and just see where we end up. Okay, we'll dial in about 1500 RPM. Uh, so, MDI, S1500, enter. Uh, MPS, 3 to start spindle. Actually, I might slow it down to 1000 RPM. Alright, so I'll drop it by hand. And just see where we sit. Right, let's come out and have a look at that. M5. Sorry, it's just some G codes I'm singing out loud. So we sort of just touched the the casting itself. I'll just have a quick look and see where we're lined up. That's actually not too bad. If you take into consideration the chamfer at the top of the hole there, um, I'm pretty concentric with that chamfer. So I am confident enough that we can take down and just nudge the top of that broken screw and just flatten things off. So, M3. That'll do. Just wanted to clean that hole up. It's cleaned up the top of that stud perfectly. I think what I'll do now is we'll relocate, sorry, change the tool for a drill bit and we'll um, see if we can bore down in that drill. In fact, what I might use, I might use a tungsten bit. All right, back shortly. Broken drill bit. These are tiny drill bits. Damn it. Now to get the broken drill bit. Luckily, it's only loosely. Uh... Here we go. It's out. Oh well. Let's clean that out. Let's try plan Z. Let's try again. Two millimeter drill bit. Let's just double check that. You wouldn't read about it. It's practically out. It's gone through the bottom of that bolt. Let's punch through. Huh. I might just keep going. As I am a professional YouTuber, haha, <laughs> I'd forgotten to turn on the mic for this segment of the video. So here I am recording a separate narrative because I like making more work for myself. Using some M6 stainless steel threaded rod I had laying around, I fabricated some threaded inserts. The centre of these inserts were then drilled and tapped for an M4 bolt to maintain the OEM spec.
As you can see here, I decided to bore out the old broken M4 bolts to the full depth in preparation to use the threaded inserts. I had to be careful that I didn't bore into the actual throttle opening. Using a mirror on the shtick, I made sure the bores were clear and ready for the inserts. And then it was time to thread the bores to accept the M6 inserts. I used a mill to hold the tap, but I still tapped by hand. Okay, as explained earlier, the M6 to M4 insert is just there. I've already put the insert in the back hole, so that's worked out well, and the inserts uh, below flush from the uh, top surface here, so that's worked out. So I'm just going to install this one in, on camera. What you might see here is a cap screw. It's M4 with a nylock nut attached. So the idea behind that is we screw the insert onto this bolt, just like that. And that becomes a stop for the insert. And that way we can pop it into the receiving hole there. I'm just going to screw that down. Now the idea of this nut here is just to stop this riding up the bolt and this we can send this all the way home. Hopefully we can get that flush. So we'll just screw that down. The idea is to have it flush with the top. And that seems to be home all the way there. And when we do get it home, we hold the bolt where it is and just loosen off this nut and that takes the locking action off the insert. Then we should be able to screw the bolt back out. And then our insert is in place, completely flush, ready to put our TPS back on. So in essence, we have saved this job. So I'm just going to check TPS now. But just before that, I'm going to blow out the holes and make sure they're clear. Headphone users. Okay, that seems to be all nice and clean. We'll take our TPS. Okay, for the grand finale, we should be able to now mount. I found some nice um, high tensile cap screws. Like these babies. And we'll throw those in. Even color coded the boot. And these will be the new retaining bolts for the TPS. So yeah, if you ever decide to take your TPS off, be very careful about the bolts when you take them out, the original OEM bolts, because if they bind, they will shear straight off and you'll end up in this mess. So that's that. We have the TPS mounted, beautiful. What's left to do is to make sure that this uh, fly-by-wire mechanism and, and gear set is clean we can reassemble and set the tensioner spring. Uh, we can do the external of the case and then pop the inspection cover off or the adjustment cover, I guess. And then we have a fully working, a serviceable BA Ford Falcon throttle body. So as previously stated, most people find the fly-by-wire throttle bodies a little bit daunting and it's because it's an unknown and it doesn't use a typical cable system. But upon an inspection of this unit off the BA Falcon, you can see that um, it's basically a gear reduction from the small motor that drives this gear and this gear then in turn drives the butterfly gear. And when I say butterfly gear, because that's what exactly what it's attached to, it is attached to the butterfly. This is what controls the air intake, therefore the speed of your engine. And this here is simply a throttle position sensor which tells the computer how far or what stage your butterfly is open and that way the correct amount of fuel is delivered as per air intake. So what we want to do now is reassemble this side to make sure we've got the correct pre-tension, which is the tension is here. All that does is provide a little bit of back resistance to the motor and drive so we can make we can guarantee the butterfly shuts in a fail safe or a fault mode. Also it takes any backlash and, and flutter out of the, the uh, butterfly itself. Okay so what we do is we pop this unit, it can only go in one way, there's a little pigtail that hangs off the back of the spring there you better see that. And that pigtail sits in a slot on the butterfly gear. And it can only go in one way, so we just rotate it until it just drops into place. 
just like that. And taking note that this has to turn anti-clockwise to provide the uh, necessary preload on the gearing system. That comes in handy later. The next step is to take your cover and being certain of the orientation, just put it back over, making sure the mating face is nice and clean. Now I've previously been over this unit and, cl and cleaned it out with compressed air. As a, and I will mention again, do not use any wet lubricants in here. It's meant to be dry by design to prevent gumming up and sticking. And the nature of these um, gear sets are self-lubricating, so we don't need to pro provide any extra lubrication. That way we can just pop on our cover and it should just with a little bit of manipulation just drop straight into place. Now once we've done that, what I like to do is just pop two screws back in. So I'll probably go either side or either end of the unit. All we need to do is just pop that in far enough just to stop the cover popping off, just for the time being. So just till it con makes contact and quarter turn off and do the same for the far side. We'll run that one down the same way. It's just till it makes contact and quarter turn off. Now, what you might see or note that I've previously taken off little, this little inspection cover and this cover comes off this area here. The reason why we need to take this cover off is because once the spring set is being put back into the unit, we need to provide that preload. Now one way to do that, well I found the easiest way, is you just get some long nose pliers and follow the next steps. Okay, so once you've got your long nose pliers, so what you need to do is just put your needle nose pliers into the opposite cutouts here. And we need to rotate counterclockwise. It might take you a few goes, but what you'll see is a tab will drop into place like that. Now the best way to explain it, just get the zoom in. Best way to explain it, there's a tab here and the tab opposite. And you can see they've dropped into the res respective uh, positions. The small tab's a giveaway, because that's the only one that'll fit in this gap. You see that tab there? That's the only one that'll fit in that gap. And then around the other side, this one here is the only one that fits there. Now once you've done that, you know you've done it correctly because the unit, this, uh, the creamy colored plastic part will pop into position. And then you can test that by coming up to your throttle body, holding up the right way, I guess, and push the top part back and release, and it will fall back to the closed position. That's all you gotta do. And then once that's done, and you're satisfied with that uh, butterfly action, take your inspection cover and there's two tabs on the outside which line up to two tabs on the outside here and just pop that back into place. Done. The inspection cover is back in place and now the throttle body is complete and ready for service. So I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a bit of an impromptu repair from my point of view because I'd never expected those bolts to snap out and here they are here again. They are Torx bits, but now we've got some nice cap, um, high tensile cap screws in there. So we can get rid of those. And we're good as gold with new stainless steel inserts, and we're back on the road. If you like my videos and, and find these repair solutions and problem solving quite interesting, please consider subscribing because I do a lot more of this sort of stuff when um, everyday things go wrong. I try and uh, find a workaround and see if we can get things up and running again with the least amount of cost. Smash that like button, hit subscribe if you prefer, and then uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.